This week, we're back down in London, where we visit the museums and see some amazing machinery, make friends with the local wildlife, and go and search a wee bit of history. Good morning, it is now uh, Saturday, so that can only mean one thing, it's uh, time for parkrun. I'll spare you the details of watching us running round and round in circles, but we are in London, and this is... Uh, just about our first London parkrun. It is our first London our parkrun. First. We're at a place called Mile End, which isn't probably the prettiest place in the world. It's very sort of Victorian industrial, bombed and then rebuilt in sort of 50s and 60s concrete. But we'll show you how we've looked around. There are some things worth seeing, like the thing that's right in front of us. And no, I don't mean the big tower block. I mean this. This is the Regent's Canal that goes from down here to the River Thames and as I said there, it's post-industrial, this was all Victorian engineering at its finest and now it's full of Canada geese. Canada, please keep your geese under control. When you see these things this close up, you're never sure if they're going to just like look at you nicely, swim away or, uh, or bite. <laughs> <laughs> These ones are swimming away down the rather pretty canal. The sun is up, the sky is blue, it's a wee bit chilly but we've got a run to do. If you were geese I would be filming you but you're not, you're just noisy, noisy birdies. So uh, go on, flap off. I am definitely playing the I wonder what used to be here game because there's a turning bit over there, a little dock bit. Uh, let's go down under this bridge and see what we can see. Bex is uh, is not interested. <laughs> She's sitting on the fence having a a chill after running up here from the travel lodge. You're not Canada geese, what are you guys? I have not seen you before. You are uh, quite noisy. Yeah, yeah, and you're a pigeon trying to get in on the act. I've just seen uh, what's in front of us. I did see a sign back there that said Mile End the Lock. So uh, let's go and look at the lock. This is an old warehouse building which survived the Blitz. And that's uh, all lots of quite new and actually quite nice looking houses. This is Johnson's Lock Stop and Shop and Moorings. It's your local pub and thing with a museum. <laughs> quite fancy the museum because it's called the Ragged School Museum. That's uh, that's quite cool. In Scotland we are used to quite narrow canals. We've only got a couple and they're not uh, they're not very wide. This one is huge but I suppose it was for much bigger barges uh, coming in through London. And there you go. That is Johnson's Lock. We do like a lock as you probably noticed. Uh, I'm not going to try and climb out onto it. Although there is a little path there that doesn't look like it would be a very good idea. There's the lower level and there is the upper level heading off, uh, heading off away from the centre of London. That is is one of the things that I like about London, although it is such a big place, it's made up of lots of different bits. So uh, especially when you're on the underground, you go into the underground and you're in somewhere not very pleasant. The next time you pop out in the daylight, you're in the middle of the city and then you disappear and you're at the zoo and it's great. It's just uh, no two bits of it are the same. They've all got their own sort of character. This, I suppose, is authentic old London, or it would have been authentic old London before people that could afford houses like that moved in. I didn't know that geese ate grass. I thought you ate uh, passers-by that stopped to film you and ask stupid questions. There's a contrast between old and new. These are some nice old canal boats and over there behind the chimney is uh, Canary Wharf and the Docklands sort of financial heart. That's uh, lots and lots of money goes through that every day. It's one of these places they don't actually make anything, they just move money about and uh, make money doing it. I wish I knew what they were up to so I could do it myself. Actually, I've just noticed there is uh, smoke or steam coming out of that old chimney there. I wonder, <laughs> wonder what it's still in use for. I did assume that it was uh, just a relic, but there's definitely uh, steam coming out the top of it. The park we're in is called Mile End Park, but originally it was called King George's Fields. And there's uh, King George V's crest there. And if you don't believe me, over there it says King George's Field. And there's our Scottish friend, the Unicorn. And there's the front of the Ragged School Museum. And up the top there, that's quite neat there is the bell. So I'm guessing that is a school bell and they've got big winchy things there. So this must have been a warehouse at some point as well. Don't know, but it's uh, quite a nice looking old building. But unfortunately I've got to go and join the cohort of people who are about to run about in this rather pretty park. Uh, this event is a bit bigger than we are used to. <laughs> uh, apparently we've just checked and last week there were 500 people here. So uh, say hello to 499 and 500 in about half an hour's time. There are a lot of people here, possibly because it's quite a nice day. Bex is making friends. Don't tell De Niro. The fast people are off. We are uh, standing at the back. Oh, we're off. See you in half an hour. And that is the park run done. And uh, the reason I chose this one is obviously there's that, that thing we looked at, you know, the thing we looked at earlier is just, oh, oh, don't, don't tell her. She doesn't know where we're going. We're going for, we're going for a little run in a park now. That's a, don't, 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 te don't tell her. Yeah, honestly, Bex, I had I had no idea any of this was here. 
never seen it in my life. I was somewhere similar a few days ago, but it wasn't, no, it was, definitely wasn't here. They're all uh, fairly crammed in, aren't they? Quite close together. It's, uh, Higgledy piggledy, I would Higgledy. say. Higgledy and indeed piggledy. Right, do you want to go and see the posh bit? Uh, just taking a slight detour, because I didn't notice that last time I was here. Look, it is my flesh also shall rest in hope. But that's uh, that's quite interesting, but even more interesting. That is a creepy door, and I bet it's not open. I bet it's very well. Yeah, I don't really want to go through the creepy door. Ooh, hello, people. Right, Bex, time to play our favourite game. Let's see if we can see. Uh, I can see a date straight away. Sacred to the memory of Mary, the beloved wife of Captain Retz, died the 18th, 18th of June. 1882. And once again, this is sacred to the memory of her. But his name, it takes more space on the tombstone than hers does. So it's her grave, but he's got most of it. Running through the graveyard, Bex is out of sight. Oh no, there she is, on my left, not right. Giving you a fright. I was here, and this is why we bring Bex on these things, because this is a Bernardo's memorial that I showed you uh, the other day when I wasn't here. But Bex just noticed this down the bottom. And his beloved sons, Tom died, aged five months. Robert. Herbert. Herbert. Herbert, sorry, yep, you're right. Aged nine years and... Kenward. Kenward? Died aged 12 years. So I wonder who he was. Who, yeah, who's he? Was oh, that Dr. Bernardo's Do- children? Like Dr. Oh, Dr. Bernardo's Dr. children? It is Dr. Ah, right, Bernardo's it's the children, children of Dr. Bernardo, not children who were in his yes. uh, orphanages. Ah, right, see, I've learnt something today as well. That's quite cool, isn't it? That moss-covered statue. Uh, I could steal that and take it home, but I'm not going to. She is actually uh, quite enjoying it, which is good, because I thought I might have got lynched. I've introduced Bex to Mr Weddell and his will conditions for the upkeep of his tomb, which I still think is one of the best things I've ever seen in a graveyard. That is the grave of Helen, and we've just spent about two minutes trying to figure out what it said. She's a beloved daughter of Prosper William Henry. I don't know what Prosper meant, maybe that was just his first name. And over here, this is quite nice, we've got the brave of Albert Litter. And Albert Litter is the man that invented the waste paper basket or trash can. He's, uh, he's quite famous around these parts. There's a lot of members of the Litter family here. There's these little tombstones are dotted about all over the place. Yes. Yesterday on the DLR, we saw that spire in the distance. I said we'd probably never know what it was. Well, we have, because Dex and I have just ran past it. It is All Saints Church. Hello. Yeah. I'm making friends as well. It's not just Bex that can make friends. Hello. (laughs) This is all very modern, but that over there is quite pretty, isn't it? It's all uh, different colours of storefronts. Right, uh, we're heading Aberfeldy Street Shopping Parade. Okay, there'll be a shop here somewhere then. Somebody has got a hankering for a Diet Coke, and there is a wee shop. So we had some light refreshments and headed back to the hotel for a shower and a change of costume before we went back into town for, yep, you guessed it, more museums. That's park run done, had a shower and got organised, and now we're heading back into London, so uh, wish us luck. More museums. More museums, I mean, fortunately. But not the Imperial War Museum for reasons that I can't, I can't fathom. You can go there if you want. Uh, we, we were running at Parkrun this morning and this uh, sort of London white boy started running with Bex and chatting away to her, not realising that I was right behind them. And, uh, <laughs> Until I said, I think I've lost my husband. And then he said, but I'm young and good looking. And it's like, he, said, di- he said, ditch the dead wood. Ditch the, I am dead wood. Exactly what he said. He said he was young and good looking and she said, well actually, now you put it that way. He says, quite a chunky bit of wall and over there that is the Tower of London where we are not going because it costs quite a lot to get in and uh, as we've mentioned before we are tight oh here's a thing it tells us about the wall so that is definitely a part of the old wall of the city of London uh, blah 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 sort of sections like this are all that remains yada 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 lower portion about AD 200 which is Roman all the way down there uh, yeah, that's quite an interesting bit of wall, and that, as I said before, is the Tower of London. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying yeah, because I can't think of anything else to say. But we are going this way to get yet another train. This is where London is not quite as much fun. I'm a tourist, so of course we've got to film every single train that we get on. So we stop off to sample some of the local cuisine before we go and hit the Science Museum. As always in these museums, the most floor space on the ground floor is given to... The shop. We're not going in there because, uh, well, it's not because we're, yeah, it's because we're tight. Bex wants to go now and find the uh, fighter planes. Uh, there might be a Spitfire here, I promised her, and she's quite excited about it. Science Museum, uh, first stop. <laughs> it's a coffee shop. We've got our coffee. 
there's a happy Bex. And they've just turned on the big engine just for us, so that's uh, that's quite impressive. I do like Victorian tech. I mean, have I mentioned I like like old world technology? Have we ever mentioned that? Anyway, that's uh, lots of people getting famous on our YouTube channel and our big steam engine giving it uh, big spins. Look at that! That is uh, that is proper engineering. That is. And after showing you the stairs in the Musical Instrument Museum, this is the stairs in the Science Museum. How exciting! And if you missed the gift shop upstairs, don't worry, there's another one downstairs. I keep having to point the camera up the way to avoid uh, anybody getting in the shot, like children and stuff. There's one of the very first computers ever, that is Charles Babbage's Difference Engine, oh, apparently. And that's, uh, again, Victorian. The Victorians knew what they were doing. Do you think Charles Babbage was like the best inventor whose name rhymes with a vegetable? You think of another one? An inventor whose name rhymes with a vegetable? Uh, that's Charles Babbage which rhymes with, uh, well... Cabbage. I can't think of any <laughs> Thanks, for, I was going to say sprout there just to be funny, oh, but no, sorry. you're right, cabbage. I'm not the funny one. Yeah, neither am I. If you like clocks and watches and timekeeping, this is a great place to come. If you think a watch is a watch and you're not that interested, it's... Um, uh, uh, right, where are the aeroplanes? I've got to say, where's that steam engine? We're standing right above it. So there is a view of the steam engine. We've come up uh, to the top floor, and to be fair, it's clocks that you've just seen, and really bad uh, puns and terrible wordplay. So just basically what you'd expect. There's a watch, another watch, a watch, there's a watch. Are you liking this? Do you like watches? I hope you're enjoying watching this episode. <laughs> oh, I've got one, I've got one. There's the inventor of the selfie. Russell Pout. Would you stop walking away from me shaking your head? That's an amazing piece of engineering as well. That's a quadrant that was used for surveys and that one was used in Lower Canada, uh, what is now Quebec. I mean, just look at that. I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? That's just amazing. Well, that's lots of clocks in early science. Now we're going into this one, which is uh, mathematics. Oh, joy. I love mathematics, me. But it has got an aeroplane hanging from the ceiling, so we will let it off. I'm sure there's lots of mathematics involved in an aeroplane, but uh, yeah, I just like aeroplanes. The aeroplane is here to remind you that mathematics is used to make aeroplanes safer, which is undeniably true and makes mathematics sound interesting. And mathematics is also there to bore the pants off small boys at school who can't get their head around it, don't see the point in it and don't like it. But they used to tell you as a small boy, if you wanted to be good at engineering or anything like that, you had to know mathematics. Well, I've been an engineer for 40 years and uh, I still don't use mathematics. <laughs> Here's something De Niro's ancestors would have recognised. This is a tote machine used to calculate the odds in greyhound racing. These were installed at tracks and uh, let's say they were used for betting and gambling in that most lovely of sports, dog racing. Another interesting thing about the tote machines, they were all under the control of the government so they knew how much tax they could collect. And if you're wondering how I know that, we read it on that little screen there. There's lots of interesting things here to see, but Bex Bex, come and get a look at this woman's eyebrows. <laughs> Some days have their eyebrows shaved off and a permanently surprised look put on their face. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how were those eyebrows? Well, they're not my cup of tea. Did she look surprised? Very. <laughs> we often talk about body snatchers when we're in graveyards, and that man there was responsible for a lot of the body snatching in London. He's not a body snatcher himself. His name is William Hunter, and he was a very famous physician, and he did autopsies. And to get enough bodies for eight autopsies, it was either executed criminals or they were stolen from graves. So yeah, his work was quite good in the way that he was advancing medical science, but also a bit dubious in that he didn't ask questions about where his bodies were coming from. And when he got a body, it would be dissected on something that looked a bit, well, exactly like that. And we have mentioned the mort safes in the past. That is a mort safe. And the bodies were put in that until they rotted enough to not be of any use to the dissectors. So yeah, it was only for a few days just until they'd gone a bit squidgy. We are in London, but there's a reference back to Edinburgh. That is Burke and Hare, the famous body snatchers. And that's a bit of uh, Burke's brain in that on the right. And on the left is a bit of Thomas Williams' skin. Thomas Williams was a London body snatcher. I kind of think that civilization ignored the body snatchers until they actually started murdering people because there weren't enough uh, fresh dead bodies in the graveyards. Bex is fascinated by all this medical stuff because her profession, she's uh, a medical professional, but I just go eh, and then try to sing songs in my head and not read some of the words because, uh, yeah, you told you. 
fascinated. Oh, she's actually found something that doesn't make me go, ew. It's, uh, that's quite nice, what is it? It's just a toy. It's an automaton representing health to the in Britain. Oh, right, that's, uh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Weighing the babies at the bottom, listening to the babies in the tummies and then measuring the children. Oh. I'm not sure why they're in that order, though. Uh, why does that one at the top look like Hitler? You can diagnose by the colour of the urine, but there's also a taste for signs of sweetness. Uh, no thanks. I'm going to leave Bex looking at all the medical stuff and I'm going to go and find all the technology stuff because, uh, yeah, time is running out. I'm trying to find the aeroplanes, basically. A flight that way. There's a replica of Montgolfi's balloon, and uh, there's a plane, and uh, there's a plane, and uh, yeah, where are all the cool ones? It's all cool in its own way, but. We're going to go and have a look down this way and see what else there is. That is a silver one and that is a old one and that's one with three wings. Uh, this is highly technical stuff here on Scotland on a shoestring. That is a Vickers Vimy, that is a bomber and that is a Messerschmitt ME163 which was a jet powered German fighter in the latter years of the war. Sorry, rocket powered German fighter in the latter years of the war. And that is a Supermarine Spitfire, and that, uh, I can't tell, I, I'm going to say Hawker Hurricane from this angle, but I'm not completely sure, I'll find out when I get up the stairs. That is definitely a Supermarine Racing monoplane, that was for the Schneider Trophy, which is a race that was run every year, and Supermarine ran it three years in a row, and got to keep the cup. Yeah. That was a hurricane, that was a good guess. You can tell by the canopy, the shape of it, and lots of other reasons, but mostly the shape of the canopy. And over there is the Spitfire with its famous mobile canopy. And there's that little Messerschmitt that we were looking at from down the bottom. Right, let's see what's over here. There is the first jet plane to actually fly, that is the Gloucester E28. And there's a prototype of the Harrier, right? Board jet, you will be. That's pretty cool. That is a German V1 flying bomb from the Second World War and the Germans thought this was a terror weapon. They would send it across and the people of London would be so scared they would surrender. But the people of London heard it coming across and they started calling it the doodle bug. <laughs> Way to make something scary sound like it's not scary. Oh, it's a doodle bug. And the people of London also figured out that as long as you could hear it, it was fine. So if you hear one going but 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 it's fine. If it suddenly goes quiet, um, run. It's got a little whirly thing on the nose. You can tell I make this up as I go along. That measures how far it's travelled and after a preset distance it, uh, to put it into a dive so it hit the ground. So yeah, that is the doodle bug. 2,000 of those hit London, 8,000 were launched, 2,000 reached their targets. There's also quite cool stories about the Spitfire, which is over there, was fast enough to catch it, so Spitfire pilots would fly and put their wing under the wing of the V1 and tip it, and the V1's gyroscope would go, Meh! and it would crash, which is a great idea, apart from if you visit a war cemetery across uh, towards the coast, there's a large plot of Commonwealth war graves all from the same day, because a Spitfire hit a V1 and knocked out the sky. Yay! Unfortunately, it landed right on a barracks. Boo! I'm going to shut up about aeroplanes now. We're now going to go to the Natural History Museum because that's where Kieran wants to go next. Uh, so yeah, dinosaurs and fossils and stuff. That's just canvas tied onto bits of wood with bits of string. That must have been really scary to fly and also not one would imagine particularly warm. Now we're going to go and look at all the engines. We're not really going to go and look at all the engines. Not allowed to look at the Lego. Safely through yet another gift shop, it's time to go to the Natural History Museum. They want a donation, they're not letting you in without making a donation to their free museum. This is the most complete stegosaurus uh, in the world, apparently. Oh, look, look, there's another retail opportunity. Bit of stone, bit of wood, bit of stone, uh, not sure what that is. Fossil, fossil, there you are. In depth, uh, in depth pottery and whatever that was, science on Scotland on a shoestring. How shall we preserve this fragile planet? Uh, let's cut its head off and cut its head off and uh, cut its head off and compress it so it takes up even less space. How do you make an endangered species more endangered? Uh, yeah, you got it. These are all hummingbirds but they've all faded quite badly. This case is apparently from the 1800s, so uh, back when it was a fashion to have a cabinet of curiosity in one's house. There's a massive bird, and behind Bex, there's an ostrich! That is a dodo, apparently, I believe, there are no dodo sort of remains left anywhere, or very little. It's all reconstructions, because they were all thrown out, because nobody believed it was actually extinct. And uh, yeah, you are extinct, so stop looking at me like that. It's alright, I'm sure everything here died of natural causes. Yeah, fossils, fossil, lots of fossils. Fossils. There's a fossil, there's a curly fossil, there's a little fossil, there's a massive fossil of something with nasty big pointy teeth. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is really interesting. I'm taking the pee just a little bit, but I do quite like all this stuff. It's just uh, not the Imperial War Museum. And if you're wondering how they can afford to run such a magnificent building, it is uh, two pounds sixty for one can of Coca-Cola. So let's uh, go into the main hall. This is where the big uh, Brontosaurus, the, the copy Brontosaurus, reproduction Brontosaurus used to be, and it was going to get replaced with a blue whale, but I'm not sure. Oh, it is. Aha, right. The blue whale I was looking for is actually here. You can see bits of it up there. So let's uh, let's look at the blue whale. There you go. That is a blue whale. Well, it's not blue anymore because it's uh, it's a bit dead. And because I want to see the blue whale from up there, we're going to go and elbow small children out the way and go up these stairs. This is an amazing building. Look at that. That is some place all built for geology and natural history and what they used to call natural philosophy. And that was when they were trying to understand how God's earth worked. That's uh, not at all getting right in the way. Oops, don't stand on the train. I wonder how many endangered species were made a bit more endangered by him. Oh, he died in the First World War in German East Africa. I have just punched some small children and kicked a pair out of the way so I can get a good view of the blue whale skeleton. And now I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it. I'm now looking for a slightly frazzled looking lady in a red. Oh, there she is. Hello, Bex. It's almost more fun watching the people and the mass of humanity than it is looking at the exhibits because, uh, yeah, it's a very, very busy place. And as I said before, these people have probably done three or four museums today with children in tow and, uh, yeah, I did hard enough as well. And I've only done two. And it's all free though. It's all free, so it's amazing. It is all free, which is rather... Oh, they do try to get your... Uh, <laughs> a donation. They do try to get you to make a donation, which is very commendable, but they'll have to try harder than that to get money out of us. It's a very ornate and grand bit of the building. Uh, quite liking it. And there's a little monkey. And there's another little monkey. And uh, yeah, it's the blue whale again, which I've now... I've seen, I've seen it. I don't need to see it again. And you definitely don't need to see it again. We are joining the taking a selfie in front of the whale uh, thing. So can you see the whale? No, I can't. Uh, there it is. Okay. Uh, it's over there somewhere. Take yourself then. Hello, whale. It's a video. Oh. <laughs> She's not quite got the hang of the technology yet, bless her. Oh, okay. There's a whale. And there's us. That's a whale selfie. Other people do it as well. That explains the monkeys. There's lots of things all over the building that are accurate sort of representations of things in natural history. That's quite clever. Once again, the things you can do when you've got the money. This is cool. We're coming down a flight of stairs. I've just realised the flight of stairs is actually on what was the outside of the building because there's uh, the windows. So this is like a little extra bit that they've added on. And you'll be pleased to hear that with one last look at the whale, we are leaving. That is the end of the Natural History Museum. We have done it in a really cursory and quick way, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. So uh, Bex is heading for the entrance and I am following her. We will uh, see where we go next, I'm guessing, food and alcohol. We've got a Dalek doing the voice. I am a tourist filming the tube train coming. One last tube escalator and that is our trip to London finish. We do hope we've enjoyed it. Uh, we are now going for a sleep. I think we're both just about London now, to be honest.